All right, so let's take a look at five more secret weapons that you probably missed in Elden Ring. Or if you didn't, maybe you didn't use them enough. I don't know, but you will definitely want to do so after this video. So let's begin. Let's get started with number 5, which is Health and Steeple, and in my opinion, one of the best looking swords, both in terms of the weapon art and also the weapon skill. The Ghost Flame ability on it is definitely something special and super unique in terms of how you activate this. Now, to get this, well, you find it at a pretty random kind of side boss right here in the mountaintops at the Snow Valley set of Grace, just south of Castle soul and you have to follow this edge right here up until you see a platform with the boss spawning right beneath you now the weapon is mostly aimed towards intelligence slash strength users or hybrids and its unique ruinous ghost flame will imbue your weapon with additional magic damage and also frostbite build up for every single hit which is why i really like playing with two of them at the same time this is going to apply that frostbite even faster and it also deals some really nice damage against targets you can also eventually stun them so it's all worth it between the debuffs the damage explosion and the weapon damage directly you can also combine this with some fire damage if you want to mix things up and then constantly remove and reapply the frostbite for even more damage in prolonged fights but personally i think that this is the coolest looking weapon in elden ring and there's almost nothing compared to it it's just a shame that the damage isn't that big so yeah that's pretty much the downside now moving on to number four the next one isn't going to have trouble dealing damage if you build it properly and this is going to be the one-eyed shield now you get this again from the mountaintop specifically from the guardians garrison if you make your way right there at the top you are going to encounter this mini boss right here that also wields it and uses it against you if you defeat them you will get the one-eyed shield and even though it looks gimmicky it's definitely worth it and there's definitely a place and time with a proper build to use it in Elden Ring. Specifically, if you go with a heavy strength kind of build that focuses a ton of points into that, this also fully scales up the special ability on it, which is basically a glorified cannon. In my case, I really enjoy combining this with a strength slash faith build since I can also further buff my damage up with the flame Grammy strength as well as the golden vow. Maybe also throw an oil pot in the maze to debuff the enemy by another 50%, which is going to absolutely obliterate them. Even on its own, the damage on it is really crazy if you aim properly, but you can further buff this up with that oil pot as I've been saying. Again, some of these bosses, oftentimes this results in like one shotting them or at the very least performing a ton of damage. Another great advantage against enemies is the fact that once you fully charge it up you basically hold it in a parry position so anything that attacks you from the front won't really be able to do anything towards you so you're free to just unleash that extra damage now moving on to number three the next one is alabaster lord's sword you find this in the lake of rot right here in the angel river you will have to make your way through the lake of rot i also suggest activating these platforms to make navigation that much easier up until you reach the the later section of it towards the next set of grace if you activate that too this is going to raise some structures nearby and then if you head over right here almost in the back you will also like kind of open up the path ahead to also reach the alabaster boss yourself which is going to spawn right here at the top and defeating them will give you the really cool looking sword now this comes with the alabaster lord's pool that recently got a pretty interesting buff so the cast speed has been increased the recovery time has been decreased and they've also added a window to roll out during the attack so that you can cancel that animation. Now this is a very similar skill to the gravitas with the exception that it seems to pull targets way closer to you than any of the other similar ashes of war or spells that exist in Elden Ring. So much so in fact that you can pretty much set these enemies up for a 1-2 attack coming up from your special ability followed 
followed up by the sword which usually takes no more than a couple of shots to fully stun many of these enemies i really like again running this with a mage slash strength hybrid that kind of makes use of both of these attributes in this case you can deal some nice damage the aoe range on it is really big and there's another big advantage that you have if you use this sword the biggest of course being the fact that since you pull enemies from so far away you can also use your environment to your own advantage to kind of pull them through gaps or just make them fall to their deaths and not have to deal with them anymore i think it's a really awesome looking sword of course it could use a bit more of a buff but it's definitely a nice option to have if you play as a hybrid the next one isn't going to have too many downsides coming up to number two we have the great omen killer cleaver now luckily enough you can get two of these in the same playthrough maybe even more so the first one that i got was at the perfumer's grotto right here very close to the lindell capital so you do need to make your way over there through one of these side paths and then head over inside all the way up until the bottom and passing some of these branches until you reach the boss room there is going to be a duo boss right here encounter that you will have to defeat which luckily is not that difficult and once you do so you will get the great omen killer cleaver if you want to get a second one there's one pretty close to the volcano manor at the prison tower church side of grace simply make your way outside going over some of these rooftops all the way until like the square part of this town where you will encounter another omen killer which will also drop another cleaver now the reason why this weapon is so excellent is because it already comes with one of these wild strikes abilities on it but what i prefer doing since it already has innate bloodlust on is to replace it with the ash of war variant and then apply with a bleed affinity which is going to more than double that bloodlust build up on it going with two at the same time and using the wild strikes is really awesome on one of these high strength builds it's basically going to let you perform this series of slashes that are very hard to interrupt by the enemy and you will also perform a ton of bloodlust even without using something like seppuku it's definitely a really good alternative if you still want bleed in your build but you don't want to respect from strength into dexterity or arcane and want to run it like that and besides since these are very heavy weapons you can combine this with a claw talisman and a black feather and just do a lot of damage with jumping attacks when equipping both at the same time in this case i really enjoy doing it like that since i can stun the enemy easier and then once it's stunned i will just follow up with the wild strikes for even more damage and bleed but obviously you can play it however you want and finally this brings us to number five possibly the most difficult weapon to find on today's list but it's still from a side boss very secret in far missoula so this is the dragon king's greg blade recently got a nice buff it decreased its damage when activated with a short button press but yeah there's also a buff to it they decreased fp cost increased cast speed and decreased recovery time so now it's a lot more spammy and the damage is still great so starting from that side Side of grace very close to maliketh you will want to take the elevator down ignore these enemies and go right here by the side of this ledge and just take the path downwards until you see these floating ruins very close to this tornado if you stand in the middle right here you will see there's a button prompt which if you activate will bring you to placidus sex which is a really interesting dragon boss that also gives you a nice remembrance getting that you will be able to exchange it for the weapon and i'd say it's definitely worth it even for a dex user the cloud form definitely feels a lot spammy than ever before it already dealt a ton of damage of course there is a small decrease in damage when activating this with a short cast but even after that slight nerf it still deals over 2500 damage sometimes 3000 depending on the enemy meanwhile the fully charged one has not been changed and it still deals up to 5k even with an unoptimized build most important though you cannot get interrupted during that animation but more important you can interrupt enemies and even fully stun them especially if you land the final attack now this is going to give you the possibility to sometimes critical strike them but there's going to be a very small window for that because your recovery window from the ability is still pretty long despite the fact that it's been decreased in the new update so hopefully from software will buff it even 
more in the future but even still it's an amazing option definitely something that you should check out even just for the cool thundercloud skill this is it with the five secret boss weapons in today's list totally let me know down below which one of these were your favorite and i'll see you guys in the next video